Good evening, y'all. I'm meteorologist Frank Strait with an update on Aaron here on Carolina Weather Group. We continue to track Aaron uh, pushing through the southwestern Atlantic. It's a Category 3 hurricane located uh, directly north of the Dominican Republic and uh, tracking toward the northwest. As you can see from the uh, track and uh, uncertainty cone from the National Hurricane Center that we have superimposed uh, on our satellite imagery here, uh, you can see that we expect uh, Aaron through the upcoming work week to uh, follow a curving path at first toward the northwest, then uh, passing right, right between the uprights between Hatteras and Bermuda, and then uh, curving northeastward and uh, passing uh, across the far north Atlantic. Aaron's currently packing... Uh, 125 mile an hour maximum sustained winds, making it a Category 3 hurricane. It's uh, likely to gain some strength again as we go through Sunday night and into Monday and uh, potentially reaching Category 4 strength again uh, before gradually losing strength as it uh, tracks over progressively cooler waters as it moves parallel to the Carolina coastline. However, Heron is going to uh, grow in size during that time. It's already a big hurricane, and it's likely uh, to get even larger in size as it uh, moves uh, parallel to the Carolina coastline. It's going to be big enough that even though it passes uh, well offshore, there is some chance that we see some gusty winds across the outer banks of North Carolina. However, that's the only part of the Carolinas that uh, we expect to see uh, any kind of gusty winds occur. It looks as though the storm is just going to track too far offshore. However, that's not to say that there's going to be some significant impacts. Uh, we will see some. Now, we'll look at the National Hurricane Center's uh, graphic. Well, first, put this model uh, spaghetti plot in here, but there's really no need for that. Uh, most of the models look like this one. They're uh, fairly closely clustered together, the model ensembles, and in a decent agreement with one another, and we have pretty good confidence in the forecast saying that Erin is going to pass uh, well offshore. And here's the forecast from the National Hurricane Center, again, keeping it a major hurricane uh, through at least Wednesday, gaining strength likely for a time before starting to weaken and uh, by uh, Thursday afternoon uh, weakening below major hurricane strength, but remaining a hurricane throughout the forecast period all the way out to Friday afternoon as it passes to the southeast of Nova Scotia. Now, you would think that we would not have uh, any significant impacts, but uh, because Aaron is going to be so strong and so large and passing fairly close to us, uh, those coastal impacts are going to be significant. But in terms of wind, it looks like uh, the only area that has any chance of, uh, in the Carolinas anyway, of seeing any uh, potential for uh, tropical storm force winds will be the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Uh, this is a plot of... The uh, wind field is making its closest approach uh, to the Outer Banks at uh, 2 a.m. on Thursday. This comes from the uh, program called uh, HurryVac that's used uh, widely by emergency managers to track hurricanes. Sorry, can't have access to it. It's for emergency managers only. Uh, but it does show the uh, wind uh, field for Hurricane Aaron uh, during the uh, middle of the night uh, on Wednesday night. This is about 2 a.m. Thursday. Uh, still a Category 3 hurricane at this point, and uh, the radius of tropical storm force winds, the official uh, National Hurricane Center forecast, shows him passing uh, fairly close to Hatteras here, not quite making it. But on the other hand, uh, the Hurricane Center is uh, saying in their discussions that this could be a bit of an underestimate as uh, those uh, winds are going to extend uh, quite a ways away from the center of uh, Aaron because it's going to be uh, becoming an increasingly large storm as it moves northward along the east coast. So those of you out at the Outer Banks, uh, you uh, do have some potential to see some of those stronger winds, but still likely only to hurricane force. Aaron is, uh, or rather tropical storm force, as uh, Hurricane Aaron's going to be passing uh, just too far offshore, most likely, for us to see anything worse than that. But uh, we are going to see some significant impacts all along the coast because Aaron, being a large hurricane and a major hurricane, is going to be uh, seriously churning up the waters and uh, causing some uh, very large wave action uh, from those swells that will be crashing into the shore along the Carolina coast. Looks as though we'll see the uh, waves uh, start to increase uh, as we go into uh, your Monday, uh, especially as we go into the afternoon and into the night. Uh, those uh, waves will start to get larger, and uh, we expect to see uh, dangerous surf and marine conditions along the uh, Carolina coast as we head uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and potentially even lingering into Friday. We actually do have model guidance for that, and what you're looking at here is what's called the GFS wave model. It's uh, based on the uh, forecast uh, from the GFS, 
and it shows that we have uh, Hurricane Aaron uh, as of roughly the current time, Sunday night, uh, sitting north of the Dominican Republic, uh, east of the uh, southern Bahamas here, and as it tracks uh, northwestward and eventually northward, uh, those uh, st higher waves, uh, you see the scale is uh, in feet here at the right, uh, yellows being 10-foot waves, uh, the uh, greens are 7 to 10-foot uh, waves, and uh, the dark or the brighter blues there uh, are your 4 uh, to 6-foot waves. Uh, all these waves uh, crashing into the shore, and even those 10-foot waves and even higher uh, do reach the uh, North Carolina coast, especially the Outer Banks, uh, by the time we get out to Wednesday and uh, continue into Thursday. And then things uh, gradually taper off from that as Aaron starts to pull away, but there could still be uh, some uh, dangerous seas and surf even going into Friday. Now, all of these uh, strong waves combined with the fact that our astronomical tides will be rising as we go through the week. We are, we'll be approaching a new moon uh, as we go uh, through the week, and uh, that results in those astronomical tides coming up as well. So all this means that we're going to have uh, some problems with not only rough surf and rip currents, uh, but uh, also dangerous seas uh, for those that will be out on the uh, plant, want to be out on the water. Small craft advisories are going to be in effect uh, Tuesday through Friday, likely all across the uh, Carolina coastal waters. Uh, so you're going to uh, have some very dangerous conditions out there with those waves. I mean, look at this. According to the, the model, if this turns out to be correct, uh, we'll see 10 to uh, 16, 17, and maybe 18 foot waves. Uh, along the coast, especially off the Outer Banks. That's some really rough stuff uh, that uh, you don't want any part of if you're on a smaller craft. And even into South Carolina, we're looking at 8 to 10-foot waves in the coastal waters there. Uh, that's some pretty rough stuff. So uh, small craft are going to be uh, better off staying in harbor uh, uh, until Heron gets uh, well out of the way at the end of the week. Uh, in addition, uh, the surf is going to be pretty dangerous, uh, especially in North Carolina, but uh, even in South Carolina, it's going to be pretty bad as well uh, with uh, some very large breakers coming ashore and uh, some uh, very intense uh, dangerous rip currents. Uh, most people are going to be wise enough to stay out of the water, but I know some of the uh, surfers out there who don't often see good surf in this part of the country are going to be tempted to go out. I'd advise against it this time because... Uh, this is going to be some really rough stuff. Uh, the the flow or the uh, winds are going to be uh, onshore for part of this event as well, making things even choppier. And those uh, waves are going to be powerful, and the rip currents are going to be rough. Even experienced surfers who understand the risk are going to be putting themselves in a lot of danger here. So I'd recommend uh, sitting this one out if you're thinking about going surfing. Uh, even if you're, even if you're someone who uh, is pretty experienced from being at the West Coast beaches, this, this is the kind of situation you might want to set out with a hurricane passing and a tense one and a large one passing not too far offshore. Um, in addition to that, thanks to the rising uh, astronomical tides and uh, those uh, strong winds and wave buildup from those uh, strong waves coming ashore, uh, there's going to be the potential for some significant beach erosion, especially in North Carolina uh, and especially at the Outer Banks and some overwash too. And uh, it's because of this that uh, we already have evacuation orders out for Har uh, Hatteras Island uh, because of the potential for some of the uh, roads, including NC-12 there at the Outer Banks, uh, to uh, get eaten away by these uh, strong waves pounding ashore in overwash. So is there's a potential for some communities to get cut off and, and potentially for an extended period of time. So that's the reason why we have those evacuation orders out, even though we're not expecting any uh, high winds. And uh, some, some of the roads and uh, even some uh, structures might be affected uh, by these uh, stronger waves coming in. But anyway, uh, we, as we get to the end of the week, again, Aaron's moving out. Things settle down uh, even at the Outer Banks, and uh, we'll, we'll start the repair process along our coast and uh, be able to get out on the waters again, if that's your thing, uh, by the time we get to uh, this weekend. In addition to Aaron, we are watching some other things out there. Here's the uh, seven-day tropical weather outlook. There's a little swirl of low pressure that uh, uh, we've been watching here. And it looks like this is not going to develop the uh, Hurricane Center. They only had this at 10%, but they bumped it down to uh, zero at this point. Very little chance of this developing. It's moving away from shore anyway. So that's not really a worry. But uh, notice here, uh, we, there is another uh, feature we're watching that's uh, to the west of Cabo Verde now. Switch back to the satellite uh, picture 
this one instead. And you can see that there are some thunderstorms associated with that tropical wave and a, a broad turning as well here to the southwest of Cabo Verde. So uh, that is going to be an area to watch. Uh, the National Hurricane Center has that as a 40% uh, chance for development area and you can see where it's going in the area where it might become a tropical cyclone. Uh, the implication here is that this might be on a path uh, that could take it toward the U.S. in uh, seven to ten days time. It's too early to say that for sure, uh, but uh, the, the uh, guidance we have here uh, has a potential uh, it shows it to be potentially concerning, so this is uh, something we'll watch. And uh, the next name on our list for this year, should this become a tropical cyclone, at least reach tropical storm intensity, is Fernand. So that would be the uh, name to watch, should this become a tropical cyclone, and ends up being in a position to uh, threaten us uh, in about a week's time. So that's it for your tropical update here for Sunday night. Uh, I'm meteorologist Frank Strait. Thanks for joining us here on Carolina Weather Group.